show you my toys. Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the Diamond Select, the real Ghostbusters Egon Spangler figure. This is Ghostbusters Series 9. Now Series 1 through 5 of the Select figures came all with Ghostbusters the movie figures from the first film. The 15 figures and you build the rooftop diorama from the end of the film. Series 6 through 8 were from Ghostbusters 2 and they started the Ghostbuster Firehouse front diorama. This is series 9. 9 and 10 are both from the real Ghostbusters, which is a cartoon show from the mid-80s from when I was a kid. I had the Kenner line for when I was a kid, and these are sort of a throwback to them. They have a very special place in my heart because they were sort of some of the first toys I ever had. As you can see here, we've got Egon, and he's in the blue jumpsuit, colored quite differently from the films. Front of the package, real Ghostbusters, kind of blue color scheme, a little bit different from what we had before. On the side, we got a picture of Egon figure up close. The back, they show the rest of the figures from this wave. Slimer, he's going to be the next one off to get. And then we're going to be closer to finishing the firehouse. Still one more wave to go. Nothing on that side. Nothing on the bottom. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. Here's a look at Egon out of the package with all of his accessories in their entirety. We will get a closer look at them in a little bit, but he's got a combined total of six hands, four gloved, two ungloved. He's got his proton stream. He's got an extra clip in case one breaks or you need one for a previous release. He's got the cartoon version of the PKE meter and the trap, and his proton back is considerably different. His uniform is this blue, completely different than movie colors. They made it that way, so you kind of tell the guys apart a little bit better on the show for kids. Love the Ghostbusters logo on his arm. Really just like the way this figure looks. I had all these toys as a kid, so this is very nostalgic for me. Well, checking out Egon's accessories. His hands, I chose to use the two semi-open hands that can hold his proton pack. The rest of these will end up in the fodder pile. He also came with two semi-open hands. Sometimes it's nice to have one of them like that so we can support under the proton pack, but I'm going to go with these two. Then he also had two completely ungloved hands. Once again, going to the fodder pile, these are the ones I'm going to use for this figure. He's got his proton stream here. We'll check that out in a second with his proton pack. He came with an extra clip, which... I remember, I think Series 1 didn't come with the clips, and you had to get them by emailing DST or receiving them in a later figure. Kind of interesting to just randomly have this one. Here is the PKE meter from the cartoon. I had the sort of cosplay toy for kids as a kid. I definitely dressed up as Ghostbusters for Halloween at least once. Really brings back a lot of memories seeing this. Here it is compared to the movie version. Totally different sculpt. A lot bigger. A lot bulkier, exactly how it should look. Then we've got the trap. It has the cord here, sort of a little bit of bit of a wire with a pedal that one can stand on, open the trap, catch the ghost. Blue color, very nice, exactly what I remember it looking like. Here it is compared to the movie trap. Once again, a completely different sculpt. It's a lot smaller, the cartoon one. Wire is a lot shorter. The pedal is completely different. And then, of course, we also have the open movie trap, shut movie trap, and then the cartoon trap. So his proton pack, like I said before, it holsters very nicely onto his backpack. You can pull it out, hold it. Has nice little details, buttons on the top. Comparing it to an older Egon's Proton Pack, you can kind of see the the difference. This one's a lot sort of movie and realistic looking compared to the cartoon one. The cartoon one is a completely brand new sculpt as well. You can see the backpack part is completely different as well. Again, a little more colorful, but also most notably completely different sculpt. Here's Egon with his proton stream attached to his proton pack. Looking pretty nice. This one's coloring is very similar to the standard releases. I noticed the connector here is a little bit different. It's a little bit fatter so it can fit on the new design of the proton pack. 
Just an FYI, they're not fully interchangeable in that aspect. Here is the coloring difference between the cartoon one and the movie one. The one on the top is from the real Ghostbusters and the one below is from the films. As far as the way the proton pack attaches, on the newer one here, it sort of just fits around the handle into this semi-open circle here. Such ease. The old design, and I'm using my Ghostbusters 2 Egon because that one is broken, so it's going to be very easy to show you on him, was connected via this sort of triangle shape onto this little triangle here. And you'd just be sort of lucky if it stayed. The original releases really don't stay very well. This is a huge improvement. Now that we've checked out his accessories, let's go ahead and check out how tall this figure is, and then we'll check out his articulation, and then some comparison photos to other figures. DST Diamond Select figures are pretty much traditionally 7-inch scale. They're on the taller side of things. This guy here, from the very top of his hair, looks like he's at about 7.5 inches. Pretty tall figure here. Next, let's check out his articulation. It's going to be kind of standard Diamond Select articulation. First, you got his head. Of course, it can go all the way around. It can look up, really not much, and down, not too much either. His shoulders go out about this far, up, down, around. He's got single joint elbows. The joint is hidden by this elbow pad, which is kind of nice. His hands do move around and a little bit of up and down motion as well. He's got an ab crunch here. Doesn't do really too much. Can look down pretty nicely though. Really does help him look down and then up considerably. He's got a waist swivel as well. No ball joint, just a swivel there. His proton pack is not permanently attached, but you cannot get it off with ease. Yes, I could slip these off, I think no problem, but this one here would have to either cut or heat up and sort of stretch it to get the proton pack off. And then he's got his hips. They go out completely do the splits for the most part. And then go forward this far, back, really absolutely not at all. He's got sort of a thigh cut right here, double joint knees, can go all the way around, and then he's got his feet, he's got nice ankle rockers, I love that, they can go up, really not very much, down considerably, and they can't really go around, they only have this sort of tilt going on with his feet. Next, I wanted to look at how much reuse was done between the real Ghostbuster cartoon figure and the movie figure. So, let's start at the bottom and work way to the top. The boots, 100% the same, pan differently, same with the entire system of legs, except that the movie figure has this and the cartoon one does not. The proton pack is completely different from the back part to the side part to the actual weapon to the straps along the shoulders and the strap across the waist, completely different, different accessories attached to them, et cetera, et cetera. Hands are identical, arms, torso completely identical, just painted differently, and the head is considerably different on both figures. So a lot of reuse, but honestly, it works really good for me. Here he is compared to the rest of Series 9, all the real Ghostbusters figures they've released so far. Cannot wait to get the other two Ghostbusters and put them together. Here he is compared to the other Egon figures that I have from Diamond Select. We've got the Ghostbusters 1 movie figure, Ghostbusters 2 movie figure, and the real Ghostbusters cartoon figure. Here's Cartoon Egon and Winston taking down a large monster ghost figure. So this is the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse as it is before any of the figures from this wave. This is from the first three waves, six through eight, from the Ghostbusters 2 figures. You can see I had to sort of prop something below it just to make it stand up on its own. It just kept falling, if not. We're still missing three bottom pieces, I assume, and three top pieces. Really hoping this wave comes with the three bottom pieces so this thing can stand on its own. Cannot wait to get this thing finished. Let's see what it looks like with some of the pieces from this wave. Here are the pieces that Egon came with. I can tell on first glance this is going to be one of the side off pieces, probably the very edge here. And this is going to be part of the top part that's going to go on top of presumably another piece and slide in on top. Let's add this to the set. 
Just like I expected, it goes on the bottom corner, allowing this thing to actually stand on its own now. Got to remove the little pieces I had in there. Fits in there very nicely, clips into place. It seems like it'll be kind of difficult to take off. This piece, actually, I cannot do anything with yet until I get something for the top of the front of the firehouse. Looking good so far. Can't wait to add some more pieces. Now here's the Ghostbuster Firehouse diorama front with all of the pieces except for Series 10 which is not out yet together. We've got two thirds of the bottom together and one third of the top together. This thing actually measures up to be a little bit over 22 inches. You have 22 and a half inches tall. Cannot wait to get the last wave, which is expected out late February, early March area. Here are the two different Ghostbuster dioramas compared to each other. You can see the firehouse diorama is quite a bit taller, but the rooftop diorama is quite a bit wider as well as deeper. Barely fits on top of the bookshelf without hanging over, but for my purposes, it does work great and it is very sturdy up top there. Like I said, the rooftop is considerably deeper than the firehouse front. Here's a shot of them where they both started at the same position, and you can see how much further the other one goes than the firehouse. Both absolutely wonderful pieces will be great for my city dioramas. And I've actually completed two of these Ghostbusters dioramas from Series 1 for my Batman world on top of the rooftops. Figures can be displayed on here overlooking the city, kind of hanging off the bookshelves, but it's been very sturdy for many years. Just so you have an idea of what I've been doing with these dioramas. Great for just regular city setups. This is where I have been keeping the Ghostbuster rooftop diorama, but I don't think it's going to continue to fit in this general location. It's on the back of this sort of cabinet thing that I use for the bar and whatnot, comedy club. And this is perfect on the back side to cover the blankness. The height is just a hair too big, and I think the overlap of this building, unless I move that building, it's not going to continue to work. But I'll figure something out. I do think the shame putting something so nice in such a small little alleyway. All in all, I must say it's a pretty solid figure. There have been a lot of waves of Ghostbusters, so at this point you should know what you're going to expect with the figure, and it does deliver. It delivers everything you'd expect, and nothing falls short. I know a lot of collectors have been waiting for a really long time to get these cartoon figures, and I know I have as well. I would highly recommend it if you're a fan of the cartoon show and you think you want these figures. I would also highly recommend it if you're working on completing the Firehouse diorama, even if you're only into the movie figures. If you've got this far, you have to get the last couple waves. I'm at the point where there's one last wave, and then you'll probably not see any more Ghostbusters figures from Diamond, except for maybe a couple of exclusives down the road. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, press like below. If you want to see additional videos from me, press subscribe. If you have any action figure review requests, please post them below. If, if there's anything you liked or disliked about this video, please post it below as well. Thanks for watching. D Hunter, I'm out.